Hey everyone, welcome to another beautiful day here at Massachusetts Maritime. No, this is not the 200, uh, 200 subscribers special, but I'll be this weekend. This is just another normal, regular day here at uh, Massachusetts at the school. And uh, basically, I'm here to teach you guys uh, two things. One, French bowling, because I learned a knot. And also, oh, and two more knots, I forgot what they're called. Uh, I, I not, I don't know, I forget. I'll teach you two, two over knots. They're the knots you do on a pole. And then also I'll teach you guys what you need to know about scheduling for classes. So uh, to get things started, I think I'll start off with the knots because I think that's easier and a lot quicker. So to get things started, I'm going to start with the hard one, the double bowling. It's really easy. Uh, at first, it took me forever to learn this. I finally actually got this about today. I finally learned how to do this, so I'm happy about that. But uh, basically, you get your uh, you get your nylon rope right here, and uh, first things you want to do, uh, you get your two ends, you bring them together like this, as so. Make sure you have a lot of slack. So you see this on the extra end. This is the slack. Now the top part, you want to put through the hole. You know, like we never before in previous videos, like up the hole. Well, you want to make sure you get this like loop here. And you're going to do it, no, then you're going to do it again. So two loops of equal size. You want to make sure you actually pull this a little bit. Make sure you get similar size rope. And then you go underneath itself, underneath here. So it should look like this. And then you just go right through the hole. And then you pull tight. And uh, I made a really awkward size bowling, so give me a moment. I gotta fix this a little bit. There you go. So a uh, double bowling right here. How you doing? You doing good? Yeah. Anyway, double bowling. So you can tell because it still has the regular bowling, but uh, it has uh, two ends right here. So instead of one. It's two. So that's basically it. I'm going to show it one more time. It's really easy. Really easy. It took me a while because the te uh, nothing against them. They're amazing people. It's just I did not understand the way they were showing it. So luckily Google is the best way to learn. Not sometimes. Don't get me wrong. They definitely taught me how to do square and all the other knocks. This, this one I think internet shows the best. Uh, first things first. Grab your end, twist like I said before. So, top end on top, just a simple loop. You're gonna put it through, and then you do it again. And then, final step you go underneath this long piece that's not doing anything, and then you just put it forward through the hole, and then you just tighten it up. Ah, my finger got stuck. Let me fix that. How about pull the wrong spot? Do do. Let's make sure I'm doing this right. Man, I messed up real quick. Hold on, give me a moment. I actually gotta redo this. Hold on. Ah! Everything I said was right, just I pulled in the wrong spot. That's the one thing I'm not. If you pull in the wrong spot, you mess it up. So, make your hole. Actually, I don't really make more slack. Hole. There we go. Now you want these holes, I uh, want these uh, loops to be around the same size. So if they're not the same size, you pull it out a little bit. Bam. Double bowling. Yep. And that's the way to do it. Now I'm going to teach you guys how to do the uh, other knots. Uh, they're really easy. I forgot what they're called. Sadly, I'll probably put them in the description their names. Or actually, I can ask my roommate right here. Um, sorry to bother you, but what are the knots you put on the poles? What? The, oh, the, 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 hitch? the hitch and the uh, 
What's the other one? I slice. No, I'm, th I'm thinking no. the slices again. I'm thinking of slices. No. Trying to think what their names are. But they're basically Nazi do on a pole. Or like a surface or something to tie it on. So, for example, I would tie it like on. Legal difficulties there. Time to show you that uh, hitch and clove hitch. I think that's what we call them. The whole purpose of this is to, uh, I believe, to tie something down and also to. Uh, Create a hitch or a stopper. I think that's the whole point of it. And it's really easy. I'm going to show you guys right now. Probably the easiest knot besides a uh, figure eight. So basically, first things first, I'm going to look right here. You're just going to throw It's going to be a little hard for me because I'm one handed while holding this. So uh, you throw it over, you make an X, and then you just go right here. You just go right through the X. Tighten it up like that. Uh, hold on. You see that? That's it right here. Uh, if I can hold this right. Bam. This is it right here. That's a hatch or a hitch or whatever you call it. It ain't going to be moving unless you take the pole with it. Now, if you want to tighten it. Oh, let me move that up a little bit. If you want to tighten it, you just do this. Boop. Oh, do 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 do. Hold on, give me one moment. Ah, now I wish I would hold this. All right, so. Nope. I figured it out. Bam. And then you just do it again. Bam. Should look like that. Yes, exactly like that. Anyway, that's how you do it. Hope you guys enjoy. Now on to the more important matter, which is scheduling for classes, which uh, starts soon. So uh, let's talk about that, which I think is way more important. Um, first things first, uh, classes. Depends on what major, but uh, your harder classes are gonna come more later down the line, depending on your major. I think all majors are like that. So, of course, your first year is going to be a lot more gen eds. And then, uh, while you go down to, like, your gen uh, junior and uh, senior year is where you're going to get your real classes. The classes are going to help you with whichever career you go into. Anyhow, um, basically, for uh, scheduling, uh, you go on self-service, and uh, it gives you the option to put in fall, spring, winter semesters, and you're able to put in... Uh, the, remember this? They're going to give this to you. If you're not at the school, they're going to give this to you. And it basically tells you, hey, how to put it into the machine. So uh, here's what it's listed on. You can see that. That's where it's listed, as it's called. And you just type that in, and then it pops these up, and then you can schedule your classes. I'm a little hesitant to schedule right now because, honestly, I still don't know how my class is going to look like. You never know how things are going to turn out, so I don't even know why I should schedule for next semester. So always meet up with an advisor. Uh, everyone's assigned their own advisor. I think the advisor collect has a like, sort of like alphabetical order, depending on your major, and they especially design or uh, design for you. So uh, perfectly, or I have my own. I have to go to them and ask them how to schedule mine properly. And uh, yeah. Basically, that's how scheduling works. Uh, what else to talk about? <sighs> scheduling, scheduling, scheduling. There's a lot of classes. Mostly, they're going to be gen eds. But luckily, if you're already in college right now, and you come into here as a transfer, a lot of your gen eds, if you did them right, are already can be transferred over. So you don't have to take algebra again. You don't have to take chemistry again. For example, my roommate will be bumping up next year because he already took college last year or beginning of this year in the spring or something like that so uh he's gonna be bumping up so he already took algebra he already took um i believe chemistry he already took west oh no he's in western stuff right now he already took some of these classes so he's good for those classes he'll be bumping up next year which would be awesome for example for me i got i had ap classes and if i did well on my ap classes then i don't have to take certain classes for example uh, American history, which would be a class I believe I would take 
next semester? I don't know, another history class or something like that? I don't have to take that. At least that's what my advisor said, because I got a three or higher on the exam. Or a four or higher. I forgot what you had to get on the exam. But basically, if you pass the exam with a high enough score, you're exempt from the class. You don't have to retake it. And I'm free from taking a, I don't know, I'm forgetting what it's called. It's some history class. I don't think we're even going to take a history class because of our major besides Western Civ. But who knows? I don't know. Oh, what else to talk about? Uh, yeah, so basically, this uh, orange sheet right here tells you everything you need to know for your classes. The student handbook. This thing's amazing, all right? This thing's your lifeline for the next few years, unless they change it up, in which case you get the newer one. But uh, basically, it's going to tell you all your classes, what you need for your major, and when you should be taking them, and things like that. Now, as for scheduling-wise, it's all up to you. It's self-service, so it's first come, first serve on when you get into that class. And that teacher's already filled on, like, 7 or, like, not really 7 p.m. because there's, there's no 7 p.m. class. But, like, on the 8 p.m. class, and you really want to take them, well, it's full. You can't do it. My bad. Uh, so, uh, try to do it early. Make sure you get the right teachers. I recommend talking to upperclassmen. They usually know what teachers are best to talk about. For example, they probably, let's just say, uh, Smith, let's just say a generic name, Smith is a great teacher, but Jonathan is a horrible chemistry teacher. So he would, uh, a sophomore or a senior, whoever took the class, would be like, hey, don't take uh, Jonathan, take Smith, because he's a lot better of a teacher. See what I'm These are just generic names. These aren't actually teachers at the school, at least not to my knowledge. Anyway, that's basically it when it comes to scheduling. Make sure you don't fail any classes and get behind. You have to have a seven-year hire to go on C-term. Uh, you are also going to be taking a lot of classes. If you're a, ma a licensed major, you'll be taking classes on the boat, which is really important. And I know each major has its own, like, thing they go to. For example, I believe, uh, uh, what's it called? Some majors go off to Arizona and do, like, um, two weeks in the mountains, like, in the desert mountains, which is pretty cool. And I know uh, my roommate, uh, Hayes, We'll be going to Florida to build some houses, which will be pretty cool. I believe that's in January or like early February, which will be awesome. So everyone has their own thing to do. And uh, yeah, that's going to be pretty awesome. I'm super excited. Uh, another thing to talk about is uh, how our schedules for classes work. Uh, as it were, grade-wise. Well, not grade-wise, but more like how classes end and begin. For example, in a normal college, classes would start after... Uh, what they call the holidays. So, for example, if I went to see in Florida, classes would start like January third or something like that. But here, classes don't start until, depending on your major, until like March something, which is crazy. Uh, for us, we have a C term, so we gotta back January by January third and make sure we're ready for January sixth when we actually go in the boat and head off for a month and so much but uh, yeah that's gonna be pretty awesome i can't wait um so like i said all, classes, all the scheduling is weird for example uh for uh summer most kids in florida would get off in early may and i think some kids in uh some colleges here in massachusetts get off early may but we don't get off until late june like june 18th june 16th around there and uh, that's crazy to me, because I'm like, all the classes in Florida are already done. <laughs> but I get why, because we join late. We join in March. So, yeah, we're, that's pretty late, so I can see why we're ending it late. But uh, that's basically all you need to know when it comes to schedule for now. If you're already at the school, you already know the basics. If you don't know, you don't need to worry about it until uh, you actually start applying. So once you actually get accepted to the school, they'll send you the information about how... and also. If you're a freshman, they make your schedule for your first semester. You don't even need to worry about scheduling because they're already going to make your schedule. Actually, not for me. Unless you're an out-state. Actually, I'm going to take that back. If you're an out-state kid, you actually do make your schedule. Because I remember me and my mom made so I take that back. In-state kids, yeah, they, they purposely make the schedule. But for us out-of-state kids, we have to actually make our schedules. Because I remember actually 
touching the classes that we needed and actually putting them into the schedule then actually pressing the submit button. So I believe if you're an out-of-state kid, you do have to make your schedules. But they'll teach you how to do that, and worst comes to worst, you can uh, call self-services and they can help you set up your system. Uh, you know it's submitted when you have the green on the uh, computer screen. So uh, I think mean, that's all you need to know when it comes to that. You guys have a expect a big video on Saturday. Don't do anything stupid, guys. And uh, hope you guys have a great night. All right. Bye.